Hello, my name's Daver, and I'm going to show you how I made this mobile workbench, outfeed, and assembly table. Thanks for checking out this video and welcome to my channel. Now I know that there are a lot of awesome and not so awesome workbench videos out there on the internet and you may be thinking, do we need to see another one? Well, the answer probably is no, but I wanted to make a build video that was straightforward, pretty simple and easy for a beginning woodworker to kind of follow along and get inspiration from. I should mention that I'm just getting started into woodworking, so I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes and I'm probably gonna do things not the way you should do them. However, this was a learning experience for me and I hope that it inspires others who are getting into woodworking and helps them get an idea of what type of workbench, outfit, assembly table that they could make in their shop. In order to cut down the length of the video, I split this build into two parts. So the first part will consist of me building the bottom part. The second part will consist of me building the top. Pretty simple, right? Now, if you want to make a workbench that has a bunch of storage and drawers and just this ultimate beast of a workbench, this might not be the video for you. This is something that is a little bit more simple and functional and easy to get started with in your shop. So without any further ado, let's get into this build. So in these opening shots, you're going to clearly see why I'm building this workbench in my shop. I will be making all the measurements on the floor and building this workbench on the floor. And I'm really excited to have something where I won't be killing my back all the time. So that's good for me. I started this build by measuring all the lumber that I was going to use for the frame of the workbench. The lumber that I'm using for this project was found at my local home center. And I think in total, I needed to make about 28 cuts. Now I'm building this workbench at the end of 2020 and the cost of lumber has gone up significantly. So in order to keep this build reasonable and within the budget that I'd set out for myself, I was gonna use the cheapest lumber that I could find. That said, the stock was really not that good and I had to take a lot of time to find the straightest pieces in the pile. But, you know, this is shop furniture. This is not for a client or anything like that. And for me, it was worth it. Once I had all my pieces cut down to size, I organized them by length. So when I went to assemble the workbench, I could easily grab the piece I needed. So right here, what I'm doing is laying out what the bottom frame will look like, just to make sure that everything fits nice and right and I didn't screw up any cuts. Looks good. Now to make my life easier, I'm going to use these parallel clamps to kind of hold everything nice and square while I screw in everything using 3 inch screws. And I'm also going to drill some pilot holes because this wood isn't the best and I don't want it splitting on me. I'm also using these corner clamps to hold my pieces together so I can drill the pilot holes and screw everything in together a little bit easier. And these corner clamps are pretty inexpensive. I think I picked these up for about $7 at my local home center. Here's the part where I just kind of screw everything together. And I'm not really using much glue on this build in case I want to recycle it in the future. Many screws later, just like that, I have the bottom part of the frame. Now here I'm laying out the pieces that I'm going to use for the legs of my workbench. And to assemble them, I'm going to use pocket holes and pocket screws. 
you can pick up a pocket hole jig fairly inexpensively these days. Other companies besides Craig are now making them. I have a Miles Craft pocket hole jig, and I will warn you that the kit that I purchased comes with a T-star bit and not a square bit. So if you're buying the Craig screws, you wanna make sure you buy the Craig driver as well so they match. I'm drawing arrows in the direction I need to drill my pocket holes in because I'm new to pocket holes and I don't wanna screw it up, so don't hassle me about it. I'm using this mobile workbench to hold my pieces and clamp them down so I can drill the pocket holes and then screw in the pocket hole screws. Or are they pocket screws? I guess it doesn't matter. You know what I mean. Now I definitely recommend using gravity to your advantage to screw in your pocket screws. Something that I did not do until about halfway through putting the legs together. But hey, you live, you learn. Once I had all my legs assembled, I dry fit them against the bottom part of the frame to kind of get an idea of where and how I was going to attach them. However, unknown to me, this was going to be a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. When I started attaching the legs to the frame, I ran into some of the pocket hole screws that I had used to build the legs. This really created a challenge because I had to navigate around where those screws could potentially be to attach the legs. After several frustrating minutes, not hours later, I had the legs attached to the frame and it was time to put on the casters. These casters are three inch casters and they're heavy duty and locking, which is very important for a mobile workbench. I'm going to be mounting the casters on a one inch piece of scrap wood, cut down to the same size roughly of the caster that will go under each leg. I originally planned to have six casters, but I ended up only going with four. Now I know there's got to be a better way to install the casters, as you can see one of the support legs from the top kind of bent when I flipped it over, and I probably could have just done this leaving the frame on the side. Now I'm about to make a time consuming mistake here by gluing the one inch scrap wood and brad nailing it in, then using the hardware from the caster and screwing it in but I didn't properly secure the one inch piece to the frame. So I had to go back and drill holes and then put screws in these to secure them properly. So when I rolled it, the wheels wouldn't snap right off. To prepare for putting the bottom piece of OSB on, I removed this side support because the other one fell off and I didn't really need it at this point in the build. After cutting my hand on the OSB sheet, I put my gloves on and got ready to measure the width that I needed to rip on my table saw. What is 48 minus 44 and 7 eighths? 48 minus 44 plus 7 over 8 is 3.125. Cool, thank you. You're about to see another good reason why I decided to build this workbench outfeed table. I just didn't have a good way to catch large sheets of plywood. And it's not very safe to make cuts like this, so I don't recommend doing so. I generally work on my projects sometimes late into the night and the tiredness was definitely getting to me and I just realized that I had forgotten to cut the length of the sheet of OSB. Whoops. After fixing another one of my mistakes, I was able to 
fit the sheet of OSB in and just screw it down and be done with the bottom part of the workbench. So that's it for the first part of the build video. Pretty simple, right? I hope that you got something out of this video and you enjoyed watching the process that I took, mistakes and all. And if you didn't like this video, well, you're in luck. There are millions of other videos on YouTube, so have at it. Make sure you check out part two of this workbench build. I'll link it somewhere in the description so you'll be able to easily find it. Till next time.